I'll be speaking with Ms. Ruth Hazland Jacobs, who was recently appointed as head of the Criminal Investigations Department in the Royal St. Vincent and the Grenadines Police Force. Ms. Jacobs, congratulations on your appointment. Thank you, madam. You have assumed a greater level of responsibility. Tell us how things have changed. Well, um, I joined the Royal St. Vincent and the Grenadines Police Force on the 5th of January, 1983, making it 32 years and seven months to be exact. During those 32 years, I have worked in several places within the police force. I have started on beat and patrol. I have worked in the traffic department, in the telecommunications department, SSU. I work at CID, Sierra before. I worked as clerk for the officer in charge of divisional office and also as clerk as the officer in charge of central police station office. And I prosecuted in the family court for about seven years. And I also did some prosecution in the magistrate court and also at the serious offenses court. And in 2012, I was appointed as head of the anti-trafficking in persons unit. And that was a new unit established within the police force to deal with matters of human trafficking. I still um, uh, assume that responsibility, but in May of this year, I was appointed to head the criminal investigation department within the police force. That is a position that was never held by a female before, and I was the first female to head that department. Um, with the trafficking in persons unit, we mainly sensitize persons about what is human trafficking because it's a new thing in St. And Vincent and, well. and Grenadines. Mm -hmm. And we go to schools because I have an assistant, Station Sergeant Simmons. We go to the schools and we sensitize students. We went to every school, almost in St. Vincent and the Grenadines, talking to students and teachers, parents about what is human trafficking. And now with CID, that is a different, a whole different situation. At CID, you have to deal with the protection of lives and property. You have to investigate every report that is made to the police. You have to continue to do the um, desensitization of crime prevention and deal with everything it's in its entirety. And at CID, you deal with everything. And also, you have to deal with personnel. Mm -hmm. I know that the police has undertaken quite a few initiatives with respect to reducing the likelihood of people, particularly young people, engaging in criminal behavior, criminal activity. And the DARE program is one of those um, that's associated with, with lessening the potential for involvement in narcotics. We know that a, number, a growing number of young people face the courts and are behind bars. Where you sit, what are some of the challenges you see because there's also this issue of an increase in disregard for authority yes we have the uh the dear program has been around for quite a long time and it's very effective in terms of uh prevention of children getting involved in in drugs and other criminal activities and they do they do a wide range because they sensitize students with drugs they sensitize them on conflict resolution child abuse and a number of 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 areas in saint vincent and the grenadines a child a person cannot go to prison um under the age of 80 of of 16 under the age of 16, a child, a person cannot go to the prison. They cannot be incarcerated. But however, if there is a situation sometimes where you have recidivists, you have some who just come and come and come. Sometimes you might find that the magistrate might say that have to stay in police custody, in the custody of the police, and then they organize programs for them to um, to go to the, maybe to Marion House and do other programs while they are in the custody of the police as as a form of of okay. punishment but um that is basically about it we don't have a lot of uh children going to the prisons you can't go to the prisons we don't have a lot of them in police custody however the challenge is great with young people in respect of the invent of all of these gadgets you might find children going getting involved in 
taking other people gadget doing other little things like that and even young people at times try to get involved in sexual activities and want to you know try out sex and videotape it and do other little things like that so it's a it's a real challenge with the young people to get them to stay on the right path to ensure that they just do do, do what is right are there any initiatives therefore that um, you maybe have identified as head of the CID that the police department, the police force as a whole um, can become engaged in to assist in the reduction of crime, to head people in a different well, direction? Apart from the, the DARE program, you know we have youth clubs, police youth clubs within St. Vincent and the Grenadines and we have youth clubs in almost every era every police district and the police youth clubs we have police coordinators coordinators who are police officers and also we have other persons parents and other persons in the community coming on board with the police and assisting in having these children in these clubs so that 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 is a real preventative measure from getting them involved we even have persons from the police youth club who might go to come to be police officers but the police has youth that club, taken place as yet as yet we have persons from the police youth club mm -hmm. who came into the police force okay. and we have coordinators who work with the youth clubs who are now police officers mm -hmm. And we have about 22 youth clubs, with police youth clubs, that is, within St. Vincent and the Grenadines. Recently, there was a police youth club camp held at the school in Belair, the secondary school in Belair. And I personally went there to do a presentation to the students on human trafficking, specifically child trafficking. And there were about 170 young persons attending that camp from the police youth club. You have been in the police force now for, you've said, almost three but, years. Yes. So you have made it a career. Yes, I have. Why did you choose this field? I wanted to be a teacher. And if I didn't get to be a teacher, then I was saying, I want to go and be a mechanic. But in the meantime, I wanted to work. And when I heard that persons were joining the police force, they had application for police, I made my application and I joined because I wanted to find a job to assist me in living comfortable as a citizen. So therefore I chose the police mm -hmm. and I made it my career. It's the best thing I ever did. And if I have to do it again, I will choose the police. When you were thinking of um, being a mechanic, mm -hmm. that is something at that time mm -hmm. that would have been off the books for women. That, that and would have been. I want to bring in the gender dimensions in terms of your work. Okay. What What are some of the areas um, where peculiarities as a result of gender issues um, may have arisen within the police force? Well, when you started, let's do a comparative. Okay. When I started, there were about 23 female police officers in the police force, in the entire police force. Today, we have about 150 and honestly, when you really look at the seriousness and how the women, the female police officers, take the job in compared to some of the men, the women are by par excellence. The women work stronger, they work harder, and they do the job more thorough, some of them, than some of the, some of the men. Is it that they think that they have to doubly prove themselves? I... I I don't think so. I think women are just a peculiar set of people who do everything, everything they do, they just try to do it with everything there is to the best of their ability and to make sure that it is well done. You know, sometimes you hear the comment that some careers are not family friendly and women have the hardest times to have children, to be mothers, to be wives. Is this something you would say is true? within the police force? Um, maybe in the past, because if you look at the older women who passed through the police force, like Dillis Peters and some others, they didn't have any children. Because in those days, a female police officer could not have children. But then it changed, and maybe if you were married, then you could have had like one, and, and so on. But today, women police have two and three children. They just have a normal family life. There was just one month 
given to female police officers for maternity. So when you had a baby, you had to come back within one month. And sometimes when you look on some of the female, you will see like little stain of breast milk on the uniform because one month was not enough for them to breastfeed the child. But today, a female police officer is given three months maternity leave. So sometimes you might see a police woman may stay home for at least six months because if you have a lot of vacation, you take your vacation, you take your entitlement of three months maternity leave. So that gives you enough time in order to stay home, breastfeed that child and socialize with that child until a certain time. Mm -hmm. So it is different by far today than what, what it was in the past. Let's touch again on the issue of human trafficking mm -hmm. because you still are head of that unit. Yes, I head the anti-trafficking process. We hear of and read about a number of horrific issues dealing with this slavery of children and young people and middle-aged people. How significant is that kind of problem and the need for us to get information out to the public? Well, human trafficking is one of the most barbaric crime there is to humanity. It's a very serious crime. And in 2011, the government of St. Vincent and the Grenadines passed in Parliament the Prevention of Trafficking in Persons Act. And after the passing of the Act, the Anti-Trafficking in Persons Unit was established within the police force. And now we have a unit Human trafficking is criminalized, a criminal act in St. Vincent and the Grenadines. Hence, according to the act, the Trafficking in Persons Unit is mandated to uh, sensitize the public on what is human trafficking. So what we do, because it's a new thing within St. Vincent and the Grenadines, we sensitize the public on what is human trafficking. So in the event that you see something, you know, you can call the unit and the unit will investigate. So far, we have investigated a few, about four or five matters where persons will see um, a suspicious move and they will call us. And sometimes uh, people misunderstand what is human trafficking. And you might find some someone might just see some activities where you might hear somebody say, oh, I saw this child in this van and this van driver was giving this child money and that looked like human trafficking. It's, it, it's beyond that. It's It's the recruitment the transportation, the transferring or the harboring of the persons, and it must be for the purpose of exploitation. So you must exploit the person. And you can't take one limb without the other limb. You have to incorporate all the ingredients that constitute human trafficking. So how is that information being put out to the public? We sensitize the public. We go to the schools, we go to community groups, and we sensitize the public. We have brochures. Just recently, the Trafficking in Persons Unit took part in the prevent, Crime Prevention Fair. We handed out brochures uh, describing what is human trafficking. We had photos showing the persons what um, the persons enslaved look like, like the activities like domestic servitude and other things, what the persons will be doing. And, 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 and stuff like that. It's a criminal act in St. Vincent and the Grenadines and the penalty is very severe. If anyone is arrested and charged and convicted for human trafficking, the fine is, is $250,000 and you could go to prison for 20 years. According to the aggrieved circumstances, let's say a gun was used uh, to kidnap the person and other things like that. If the person is pregnant, the, 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 the sentence can, can go up. You can be fine and still confined, according to the agreed circumstances. In order for policing to succeed, and especially as head of the CID, this is so much more in your court, there is need for the public to cooperate. What would you say is the nature um, of the relationship between the police and the public that would assist in the task that you have to do in the CID? I encourage the public to, to cooperate with the police at all time. And in turn, I say to the police officers under my command, we must treat the public right. We must do what is necessary. 
when a report is made, we must investigate the, the report. We must follow up with, 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 the, with the person who's making the report. We have to let the people be comfortable with us. So we have to treat them, we have to treat them right. I, um, I don't like issues of breach of human rights, period. So I said to them, people come to me and report, I don't believe in trying to get the information out of a person by any kind of means where you have to maybe hit them or anything like that. I don't believe in that. I believe in solving the people. And I believe when you serve the people, the people will be comfortable with you. They will have confidence in you because you are doing what is right to them. And as a result, they will cooperate with you. We have to hold information in the strictest of confidence because if someone comes to you with information and you divulge that information, putting the person at risk, it will not be right. So when you get the information from the public, you have to use the information and keep it in the strictest of confidence. You have to let the public be confident, be, have confidence in you and be comfortable in coming to you and giving you whatever information. There are times when you will have people who might be saying, oh, I am very fearful, I don't want to give the police in information, I want the police to talk out, or I am fearful that I might be killed. We have system in place to make sure that you are protected. If you have information for the police and you come forward and give us that information, that information is kept in the strictest of confidence. Hence, you give your information and, and, and you go to the court. If you have to, you give the evidence and we will protect you. What's next for Ruth Hazel and Jacobs? Um, I am nearing my retirement and uh, I am comfortable and I am happy that I live a good 32 years police life. I work hard, nothing was ever easy for me. I work hard, I work honest, I try my best to be honest at all times and I work hard and do what I have to do. Whatever I do, I do it to the best of my ability. I make sure that I give it a good shot. That is in me. And I do what I have to do. I would like to see, I would like to see CID that I'm heading right now be at a place where we are able to just solve the crimes, whatever happened, whatever crime it is. I want to make sure that it is properly investigated and properly solved so that we can make the citizens of St. Vincent and the Grenadines happy. Just now I'm going to my retirement. I want to make sure that I have a good civilian life, put my um, my bag on my back and go to whatever workshop there still is and still make my contribution and still share my experience and still live a normal, a normal life in the community. Now and then I go to New York and visit my mother and my other siblings and I am good, spend some time with my grandchildren and I'm happy. Thank you very much.